everyone. It's Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitcher. I am here. Well, I guess I should say what this channel is. This is a channel about cross stitch primarily and sometimes other crafts. I'm here today with my first Flossmas. I think that's what people call it. I've heard it tossed around as Vlogmas, which I think is like a more traditional YouTube version. Stitchmas, Flossmas. Since I do floss tube is what I call my videos, I'm going to call it Flossmas. So I am really excited to do these weekly videos in December. I have a bunch of things to talk about today. And first thing is, I don't know if you'll notice or not until I hold up fabric, but I got, I got a new light. <laughs> I got a ring light with a phone stand. And so hopefully the quality of my videos will be a little bit better moving forward. And certainly hoping my lighting for the fabric and looking at everything will be better as well. Um, these will probably be maybe slightly more casual videos, although I still prepared my usual agenda. I feel like I run my floss tube like I run a business meeting, but <laughs> hopefully you guys like what you see. Um, I know I don't usually do much of a life update, but maybe I'll talk a little bit more about my life and personal stuff and these videos since they're a little more casual. So if you have any questions about me or my stitching or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer some of them in upcoming videos. In terms of what I've been up to over the, the past week, work has been really, really busy for me. So I participated in, um, oh shoot, like the Know Your Stitcher Instagram. I'm forgetting what it's called. I'll put it here if I remember. Uh, earlier this year, but I know not everyone follows me on Instagram and um, a lot of people just watch Floss Tube. So in terms of work, what I do is I am a research director at a financial services company, which probably means nothing or very little to most people, but essentially I do user experience and insights. So what user and experience insights. So what that means is I work with product teams at the financial services company that I work for to help them understand how customers are thinking about personal finance and to improve our digital experiences to better meet customer needs. Fascinating, I know, but this week in particular, I had, um, I had a study going, so I was talking to users basically all week, which is, you know, Zoom interviews, and they're an hour each. They're, you know, very enjoyable in the moment, but you definitely get fatigued. So all that to say, I didn't do quite as much stitching this week as I normally would at the end of the day. I wasn't necessarily always feeling like stitching, but I do have a good amount of stuff to show you. And I think we can jump right in. The first thing I wanted to do is I've seen some people do this in past Flossmas videos. Like I know Mama Loves You GB does this. So I'm going to show you a past finish each week that's related to the holidays. I don't have that many. So in the course of these four videos, I'm probably going to exhaust I'm definitely going to exhaust my past holiday slash Christmas finishes. This one is the first one. We're going to start with a bang. It's technically not Christmas or technically not Christmas. It's more winter, but it is a winter rose manor. This is by With Thy Needle and Thread. I finished this last year toward the end of the year, I think. And I stitched this on... 40 Count Old Stationery by Seraphim Fabrics. And I used all of the called for threads with the exception of the white. So the called for white in this uh, chart is I think Gentle Arts Roasted Marshmallow, Toasted Marshmallow, something like that. And this is oatmeal, Gentle Arts Oatmeal for all the white. I loved stitching this and I actually had originally bought a different frame for it that was the same frame that Lori Holt had used and some other people and then I realized stitching it on 40 it was just going to be a little bit smaller in the frame with more of a margin than I personally wanted so I went with this frame which is from it's upside down in here but this is from signed and numbered on Etsy where I get a lot of my frames if I do my own framing just from looking at this now it's looking a little loose on the board. So I think I might take it out of here and relace it. I think all I did last year was pin it. So I think I'm gonna add some lacing to make it a little bit tighter. But that is my first previous finish of Winter Rose Manor. 
Okay, what do we have next? Let's do my stitching. As I said, I didn't do a ton of stitching this week, but I did do some. And what I did primarily was this, which is the Heart and Hand Wee Santa, if you can see him, 2022. I had filmed a floss tube, a regular floss tube last Saturday and uploaded it. And I had not started it at that point on Saturday. I got a tiny start on it Saturday night and I did end up finishing it. So here is my finish on Heart and Hand We Santa 2022. I stitched this on 36 count caramel macchiato by Fabrics by Stephanie. And I used all of the called for threads with one exception, which is, I believe it calls for all of the brown is Classic Color Works Wagon Wheel. And I didn't have that. And I guess I forgot to order it when I ordered the pinks like for his coat, which is Classic Color Works C. Shelley. So I used uh, a color and cotton thread that I had gotten when I was briefly part of their Thread of the Month Club, and that was Color and Cotton Hot Cocoa. I really think that, as other people have mentioned in their videos, this is definitely a project you could do from Stash. So with the exception of Santa's coat, which I do think it's really nice to get the variegation of Sea Shelly, everything else is, you know, pull a red, pull a pink, pull two colors of green and a brown, etc. And it might be hard to tell in this lighting or in this video, but there are some really cute little beads on it. Santa's holding some snow beads, those little white seed beads. And then there are also small pink seed beads scattered in a garland. So that was a really fun project. I worked on that from Sunday through Thursday approximately and had a lot of fun with it. And in terms of finishing, I'm trying to decide what to do. I think I'm going to make a pillow, shocking, and I have a few different pieces of Lady Dot Creates Velveteen. So I have, I don't know the names, I'm sorry. I have this sort of grassy green that matches the Gentle Arts Poblano pepper that is in the uh, chart. I have this really pretty magenta color and then this pale blue. So trying to decide which of them I wanna do. There isn't blue in the chart, I just like how it looks. But I'm leaning toward this green and I'm thinking I might buy some Lady Dot chenille, maybe in pink or white, to do around the edges. So we'll see. And the other stitching I worked on this week, starting in the past couple days, is from the Evertote Modern Folk Embroidery Roxy Flosco Holiday Countdown. So when I get into Advents in a moment, I'll show you that. And I do have, I know this is annoying, I do have a mystery project, which... I'm not going to share until it's done, which will be at the end of the month. So you'll probably see that one in my last video, but if my stitching seems a little bit lighter than usual, that is why. I won't, I won't belabor the point. Um, moving on to my advents, I have three. So I have, as mentioned, the Evertote Holiday Countdown. I have my Goosey Fibers Yarn Advent, and then I also have my Bon Maman Jams, Spreads, and Honey Advent. And I've opened up two days of each of them at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got. Let's start with the Evertote Holiday Countdown because that includes stitching. So on day one, we got a few different things. First of all, we opened up the day one uh, image and chart. There's a little bit of an introductory, uh, some language on here. I'm obviously not going to show you the chart. The chart's on the back. Also on day one, we got this laser cut wood ornament that says 2023 has MFE, RFL, or RFC, and E for each of the companies participating. And I'm gonna put that on my tree after this video. Then, kind of show you all at once, there was the fabric on day one, and then a needle minder. And then a floss from day one and a floss from day two. I'm going to show you it kind of all together because I've already started working on this. So here are the two flosses that we've gotten so far. The first day was this dark green pine color, which is called You'll Be Pine. 
in day two today is this lighter green color called Frost and Found. Uh, Caroline in her video, Caroline from Evertote Off the Grid Needle Arts, described this as a very, very pale, frosty green. When I first took it out, to me it looked like a very pale blue, but now that I'm in more daylight and in my ring light, I can see that it is definitely a very pale green. And here is where I'm at so far. So the linen for this is called Turtle Dove Linen. I do believe it is limited edition to just this box, but Caroline has mentioned that they're releasing a new permanent linen called Speculos that's very similar. I would describe this as a, a very gray green, a grayish green. It's really pretty neutral. We also got this laser cut needle minder with a very strong magnet, so I'm enjoying that. And what you'll see here is that I have done the day one stitching with the You'll Be Pine, and I am working on the day two stitching, a little bit hard to see because it is very tonal to the fabric, which is these branches coming down the side of the new color, the frosty color. So this has already been really fun. I wake up in the morning and it feels like you know, Christmas every day when I get to go and open my little packages. Um, my husband, Chris, is doing an advent as well. I got him in the spirit this year. So he's doing the Lego Star Wars advent and putting those together every morning. It's a nice kind of way to wake up and have a cup of coffee. Speaking of which, I made a cup of coffee for this video. I went through a phase maybe six or seven, seven years ago with the Starbucks, wish you were here or I forget what the series is called. You are here. You are here series. And I have a lot of them. Actually, we've sold probably 20 of them and we still have at least 10, maybe more. This is the Niagara Falls one, which I really enjoy. A little interlude there. And that is Evertote. So moving on to my Goosey Fibers advent. So hold please. I'm going to go grab the box. Okay, so here is my Goosey Fibers box. You slide it out and open the numbered door each day. And so far, oh, as a reminder, my Goosey Fibers box is a DK weight yarn that I did. She had some options. I chose DK and the theme is Where the Wild Things Are, the children's book. And day one, our yarn color was Wolf Suit. Here it is. I highly expect that the vast majority of these colors will be very neutral, and that is part of the reason I chose this box. But Wolf Suit, as you might remember, the main character of the book wears a wolf suit for the duration of the book. This is a really nice pale gray with little speckles of blue and pink in it. And then day two, which I just opened today, is called Mischief. And it is a very, very pale cream with lavender and some tan as well. So I know they look very similar, but when you hold them next to each other, you can see that there's some difference in the variation. And I've already started thinking about what I'm gonna do with these. I have a few ideas that I'm tossing around. One thought probably the most likely for me to do is put it here, it's called the Sweet Shop Blanket. This is a blanket where you do half half square triangles. The other half of the square is like a cream or a neutral color that's on all of the squares. And then each of the different triangles would be a different one of the advent days. Another option is the habitation throw. I'll put that there for a second. These are all kind of advent calendar ideas that you can find on Ravelry. And another one is the Radvent blanket. I think it's what it's called. So Thinking about what to do with that, I don't have any intention of starting anything with these until at least January, if not later. I want to prioritize my shawl that I'm working on, my snarkometer shawl, and I'll talk a little bit more about what I've been knitting this week in a moment. The last advent I had is my Bon Maman calendar, which again, give me a moment, I'm going to grab it. Okay, so this one is heavy. <laughs> it took me a second to pick it up. Looks like this, and then the day's open. And what I've gotten so far, day one 
is this white nectarine peach lemon verbena jam, lemon verbena spread, technically. And day two, which is right next to it very conveniently, is the strawberry linden blossom spread. So I have not opened either of them yet. I definitely won't go through all 25 of these in the month of December. I We have the kind of a local to New England English muffin maker. And I think we're going to get some of those. And then my husband and I will go through and start trying these jams out over the course of the winter, I would imagine. Okay, where am I? <laughs> Purchases. I have bought a couple things this week. I had one package come in the mail this week, so let's go over that. So what came in the mail this week is a uh, one, two, three stitch order, a cross stitch order. Of course it's a cross stitch order. One, two, three stitch order. First thing, not very exciting. It's just two threads that I needed for Christmas at Hollyberry Farm, which if you're stitching Christmas at Hollyberry Farm, it does not tell you in the chart that you are likely to need more than one skein of what did I buy? Gentle Arts Piney Woods and Gentle Arts Straw Bonnet. So Piney Woods is the fronds that make up the majority or the entire border along with the berries. And Straw Bonnet is the house. And the house is massive. I have not gotten to the point where I'm running out of either of my first skein, but I did a little bit of math. And despite stitching with one thread on 40 count, I still think I'm going to run out of if not both of them, at least one of them. So I wanted to have backups. So that's the first thing. Then I got a quarter yard of 40 count Zweigart linen in light mocha. And the reason I got this is for Autumn Quaker by Leela's Studio. So that was a purchase this week. I ordered it from Top Knot Stitcher. She, I think, got some in like pre-order stock that have already shipped out. I ordered in her second restock and I think she said she's going to be shipping those out in the next week or two. So I just intend to start that sometime around New Year's. So no rush. I still have to collect the DMC. And then the other fabric I got from 123 Stitch is Picture This Plus 40 Count Heartland, which is not something I've stitched on before. It is a very creamy neutral with some tan modeling. I did think it was going to be a little bit darker. I want to use this for Keep on the Wood by With Thy Needle and, whoop, by With Thy Needle and Thread. And there are some colors in this like Parchment, Weak Style Works Light Khaki, Gentle Arts Parchment, Classic Color Works Perfect Pie Cross that are all pretty light. So I want something dark enough that those things pop and I'm not sure if this is going to be right. So I am still waiting on an order from Hollis Hands Create that has needle bling cookie dough in it, which I think is a newer fabric and I'll compare the two and decide between them. TBD. So I have a couple more things coming next week and that is what came this week was the one, two, three stitch things. I also went to the, or started going to the Jingle Ball last night. So if you're not familiar, I think most people might be, but the Jingle Ball is the brainchild of Stephanie Webb, Lindy Stitches, and it is a virtual holiday stitching event. It started last night. Give me a moment to take a sip. She has the 12 designers of Christmas, and I won't list them all. You can go to the website if you're interested. I'll link it in the description. But they all have little shops within the Jingle Ball. And so last night I did not join any of the stitching tables. I'm planning on doing that today, Saturday, December 2nd, tomorrow, Sunday, December 3rd. But I did do some shopping. I have not ordered any of the charts yet, but I do have some in mind. But I did order some fabric. Um, there was a fabric dyer new to me in the Ink Circles shop called Mason Linens, I think. And all the fabrics were neutrals with no modeling and different colors were, I think like Santa's cookies, um, reindeer, I'm forgetting the other ones, coffee. There's like a coffee one. I ended up ordering two. I ordered a piece of 40 count. Oh shoot. I ordered a piece of 
40 count Santa's cookies, which was like the, I think I ordered, there's multiple shades of it. I ordered like the middle shade. And then I ordered a piece of coffee with two creams, which was again, a lighter shade of like a rich brown. So I have no concept of what these linens are going to be like. I've never seen or heard of them before last night, but when I see a new linen dyer, it's hard for me to resist. So I did buy those. And then, as I said, there's a couple charts I have in mind. There's many, many beautiful charts in the Jingle Ball, many exclusives. And I just have to think to myself, you know, which of these things am I likely to want to start either immediately or before next year's releases? Because my assumption is that most, if not all of these charts, with the exception of the Jingle Ball Ornament book, will be released next year. Okay, that's the Jingle Ball, my purchases, knitting. So I did not really knit on my shawl this week for a reason, which is because I was knitting a gift and I'm giving it to the person that it is for tonight. So I don't think she watches these videos anyway, but if she does happen to watch it today <laughs> before we have dinner, Kate, look away. Uh, I got this free pattern at my local yarn shop. It's called the Marion cowl. It's a pretty basic seed stitch cowl and the yarn that I picked out, which this is how much I have left, is called Sequoia Ba Yarn in Sequoia. It's a 100% superwash merino wool, 85 yards. I just found it at my local yarn shop and I have very little left. It's a super bulky or bulky yarn and I used new to me knitting needles. The brand of these knitting needles is called uh, Luka, I think is how it's pronounced, L-Y-K-K-E. I tried to look it up online to make sure I was pronouncing it correctly, but if you know how to pronounce Luka better than me, please tell me in the comments. And these are a size 17 wooden needle. And the result is this cowl. So like I said, it's a pretty basic seed stitch cowl. You cast on uh, like 45 stitches and then follow the pattern. It is a free pattern, so I'm not really giving anything away here. And as you can see, the yarn is this beautiful cream base speckled with orange and yellow and pink, which are some of my friend's favorite colors. So I really hope that she likes this. And I won't put it on because, you know, it's a gift, but I think it's nice and slouchy and hopefully she can wear it all winter. So that was my primary knitting this week. I don't do nearly as much knitting as I do cross stitch. This project was probably, you know, a few hours of knitting, maybe half an hour to an hour a day over the course of five or six days. I think I started it on Sunday and that's pretty much all the knitting I did. I did a few more rows of lace on my snarkometer shawl. So you'll see more of that next week, I would imagine. The last second to last thing I want to do in this video the last thing is going to be a giveaway is just tell you what I'm reading so I'm going to put a picture here this is called the marriage portrait and it's by Maggie O'Farrell she also wrote Hamnet if you have heard of or read that book also very good this book is about Lucrezia de Cosimo I think is her name <laughs> I'm totally forgetting um but Lucrezia is uh the daughter of a very prominent family in Italy in the 1500s. She's married off to this duke very much against her will and it is a uh, his historical fiction kind of based on true people but from the perspective of Lucrezia written by this author and I'm, I'm in the middle. I've only read about 50% of it but I'm enjoying it very much so far. I tend to like historical fiction and I really like Tamnit, so I thought that I would like this as well. If you've read The Marriage Portrait and you can remember Lucrezia's full name, please tell me in the comments. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm reading this week. That's everything I'm doing pretty much. And finally, I'm gonna do a little giveaway. So my giveaway is based on what I stitched this week and it's my copy of the, hands, the Heart in Hand we Santa 2022 and along with that I'm going to give you my leftover fabric. So there's enough here to complete 
the Wee Santa on this 36 count caramel macchiato. You won't have a huge border, but it's the same size as the piece I showed you that my finish is on. And again, this is 36 count caramel macchiato by Fabrics by Stephanie. And just because it's fabric and it's a little easier to ship fabric domestic, I'm gonna limit this week's giveaway to the US. I will try to make sure that future weeks are open to international in some capacity, but for the purposes of this week, if you want to win We Santa 2022, leave me a comment and use the word we and all the usual B18, don't use the word giveaway, yada, yada, yada. I will not comment on your comment to say that you won. I will announce it in next week's video. And because I know there's a lot of kind of scammer things going around right now. I think that's everything. B18, usual legal stuff. Use the word we. That's it. I think that's everything I have for you guys today. I wasn't, I had no concept of how long this video was going to be. Currently my phone is showing me that it's approaching 27 minutes, which I really did not anticipate. So we'll see if I edit it down at all, but this has been fun. I'm hoping, you know, go into week two with a whole new batch of things to show you, another past finish, hopefully some good stitching. I do have some, some stuff coming in the mail next week, which should be pretty fun. And other than that, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Enjoy the Jingle Ball if you're attending, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.